Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. My name is Chris and this is the India Fox Teco MB339 or Microsoft Flight Simulator. And this is available for PC and Xbox. We're going to be hunting for MiGs and ballistic missiles on our low level mission from Newcastle to Edinburgh through the Spade Adam range and the Moffat Valley. This video will include a quick start tutorial, a demo of the impressive SoFly weather presets and a downloadable map and GPS route if you want to try it out for yourself in any aircraft. Let's jump into the cockpit. Okay, so here's my unofficial quick start method. It'll take about two minutes to get this aircraft ready to go. Battery, generator, fuel shutoff cover down, servo cover down, get pipe temperature limiter, master on, we can switch the radios on if we want to talk to anyone. And the beacon can go on. We'll close the canopy because it'll get loud. Make sure you lock the canopy. Tell the ground crew. Press the start switch. percent RPM, throttle goes to the idle stop, and the start will continue up to about 40% RPM. If the mirrors are blinding because of the sun, you can click on them to move them in. With the engine started, we switch our nav lights to bright, ETO switch to on, GPS switch to on, navigational aids as required, altimeter set, and we are now good to taxi. Before taxi, we'll select taxi light, anti skid, and the flaps will go back to the takeoff position, and the speed brake will be retracted. Yeah, pretty simple. Time to taxi. This weather preset is by SoFly. This is the UK typical summer. At the end of this video, I'll go through some other really nice presets that they've done, just so you get an idea of what to expect. Here we are at the hold point for runway 27 on Foxtrot, that's the GA ramp. Normally this runway is around about 7,000 feet, but from the midpoint departure from Foxtrot it's about 5,600 feet, which is fine for this aircraft. Flaps are set, the lights are set, the squawk can be set as you need to. The pito should be switched on. I switched on a bit early. Hey ho. I'm going for 90 knots rotate and lift off around about 120. We are at 3,000 feet, 300 knots. And welcome to Newcastle upon Tyne. You can see the Tyne River beneath us. We're just going to fly down alongside some of these bridges and then head off to our little entry point, which is the Angel of the North. First bridge you'll see will be the Millennium Bridge. Second one, I believe, is the Tyne Bridge. Then the Swing Bridge pops up late for some reason in the scenery. There she goes. And the rest of these bridges. Behind, you can see 
uh, St. James's Stadium. Just the amount of detail in this uh, in the city is quite impressive. That's it. The shortest tour of Newcastle you've ever had. The 4,000 feet heading south, southwest, we're looking for Angel of the North. We use a technique called big to small. That is to say, we'll find a big feature and then we'll narrow it down by finding progressively smaller features until we find the one we want. So on my map, I can see a split in the road as it goes north. It splits into two, one northwest, one northeast. There's a patch of land that hasn't got many buildings on. And on the western edge is where our Lola Blanchard point is. Here we can see that patch of green land. We can see where the road splits just about here. Follow that road up and there's the Angel of the North. Like I say, we're not going to be using timing. We're just going to use big features and headings so it's really easy. First heading is going to be at 259. The Angel of the North was constructed in 1998. We're heading 258. I'm going to accelerate up to 420 knots. You can do it whatever speed you like because we're not using timing. All we do is just concentrate on the big features we find along the way. And my next turn point is going to be Derwent Reservoir, which is a visual reporting point. And it is the biggest water feature around, so no mistaking it. Wind farms off to the right and a small lake that is on the map. Now over the hill, here we go, Derwent Reservoir. Next heading is going to be heading 332 from the western tip of this reservoir. We'll head north up to the west side of Hexham. Oh, sun in the mirrors. There we go. So heading 332, if we were using a low flying chart that the military use, you'll notice that there's some flow arrows. That's to say that any low level traffic will have to adhere to a certain direction, anywhere that's going north to south, south to north. In our case, if we're going north, we need to be on the west side as we travel past Hexham. And if you're going south, you have to be on the east side. As I'm using a half mil UK BFR chart, that isn't depicted. The scenery around here is just stunning. There's Hexham, off to the right. Our next heading is going to be 363 to pass down a valley. So the 363 heading is kind of a confidence thing. We can follow the valleys we want to, weaving up and down. As long as we're roughly heading uh, 263, then we're good to go. Our next waypoint is a large, I want to say town, could be a village, I guess, to the north of this valley. And it's about 11 miles down this route. Now, if you're flying an aircraft that's doing 360 knots, that's six miles a minute, so you'd expect about one minute, 52 minutes until you get to that town. If you're doing seven miles a minute, 
maybe one and a half minutes. So you can work it on the fly, unintended, if you wish. Here's Holt Whistle. And heading 324. Here comes the interesting part. We're heading into RF Spade Adam. This is a 9,600 acre range that's currently used for electronic warfare. It was originally, or should I say, it was originally produced or um, developed for uh, the Blue Streak missile, intermediate range ballistic missile that they were testing out. And that was around about 1955. Unfortunately, that didn't, uh, I want to say, take off. Again, pun intended. Uh, and that was cancelled, but you can still see a Blue Streak missile parked at RF Spade Adam, and we'll find that shortly, as well as the original launch platforms that are still there. So here's RF Spade Adam, just off to the left. We'll pause our navigation here, and you'll see a cylindrical thing in the parking lot just down there. That is a Grade 2 listed monument. It is part of a Blue Streak missile. That's cool. After that, the RAF officially took over in 1976. I think the uh, ICAO code is Echo Golf Oscar Mike. And in 1977, it became the uh, range that we see here today. Now on the right-hand side here, you can see DNV gas testing facility. They do a range of testing based on uh, how fire affects things, how destruction of the pipe work will affect things. So naturally it is somewhere you don't want to fly over. I mentioned the Blue Streak missile launch platform that is passing underneath now. It's buried in the forest here. And in fact I believe there was uh, a nuclear aspiration because there are missile or there was the beginnings of a missile silo being constructed and I think that was announced in 2004. Down to the right hand side you'll see a SAM system. This is an SA2 setup. I mentioned this was an electronic warfare range, so this is one of those ranges where not only can aircraft pretend to attack things, they can also be attacked by things on the ground, which is excellent training. Obviously they don't really shoot things, but they'll make the aircraft think that they're being shot at. If you wanted to do a 30 degree dive and attack a target, then if you fly around at 30 degrees angle of bank and you put your target off the right wing tip, as you pitch back towards the target, and in this case I'm going towards the SAM site, by the time you get the nose on, you notice that the attitude indicator is showing 30. Unfortunately, the missiles aren't here. I don't know whether they purposefully blank them out, but they uh, can be seen on satellite imagery. final point to show will be this little airfield down here and in it you'll see lots of abandoned aircraft kind of fish beds some MIGs lots of other things and that's kind of used as practice targets and that concludes our tour of RF Spade Adam as we float out to the north, we're going to kill the reservoir and continue on towards the Moffat Valley. Again, I'm not using any timing. I could pull up to medium level and spot the, spot the reservoir and fly straight to it, but I trust the fact that if I head this direction, we'll come across the reservoir shortly. Okay, so there's a water feature off to the right. And my turn point is to the northwestern tip. Heading will be 326. Well, better to be lucky than good. 
Heading 326. Fuel is showing 300. Sun again. Okay, 326, we're going to make our way up here. We've got about uh, three minutes until we get to the Moffat Valley. In between us and the valley is a place called Howick, I believe. And that'll be our turn point, just to line ourselves up. take the opportunity to do some illegal ridge rolling and a ridge roll is where you fly up one side of the ridge and if the hill is big enough you could let the nose drop down the other side and fly down the other way we'll do some more of that later or maybe now Okay, I think I can see the beginnings of a town up to the right one o'clock and the heading from there we're going left to beam it west to beam it and it's going to be heading 338. Ordinarily flying up here there are two very large masts that surround a place called Selkirk just to the east of the entrance to the Moffat. And they stand out from miles away because they're about 700, or one of them, 780 feet tall. Sadly, not so much in this sim. Now, there are two other add-ons I didn't include in here. They're freeware from flightsim.to. One of them is uh, We Love BFR, I think, Region 1, and Solar Farms and Power Lines. So links for those will be in the description below. I did originally load them up, but my system is struggling somewhat with the scenery, so I decided not to include them this time around. So the entrance to the Moffat is here. There should be a manor house or a large building in the entrance. And the heading we're looking for is 247 as we take a left. Okay, welcome to the Moffat Valley. This is a path well trodden by RF aviators. It's one of the many valleys uh, that they use, but this one takes us nicely east to west. Uh, 247 is the mean direction it'll head and it will eventually get to a large water feature. And I hesitate because it's a lock or a lake or a reservoir or something. But if I call it a water feature, I'm fairly safe. There is another valley that's further north in that direction that takes you up to Peebles. It ent enters at Gala Shields, I think, and goes to Peebles, and it's kind of the, the gotcha. You don't navigate accurately to the entrance to this valley, you'll find yourself heading kind of more northwest. Uh, ask me how I know, because I've been there, done that. Here is my water feature. We're going to be taking a left, following it round to the left, rough heading 217. Careful over the water because it's fairly glassy. Glassy water can lure you into flying too low. The strange thing about this valley is it just looks like you're driving towards a brick wall. 12 o'clock just looks like the end of the valley. Have confidence. Stay on the left hand side. And as it opens up, get ready to take a right. There'll be some more of this valley flying once we get out to the end. 
This opens up in another minute and a half. We'll be taking a right and following the A74 northwest bound. We also go past the town of Moffat, which this valley gets its name. Well, I say the valley gets its name, but any aviators coming down it, that's what it's known as. Okay, heading out of here, we're going to take a right. It's going to be heading 324. And there's a couple of valleys. If we go tight round Moffat, we might end up going up a different valley. But we want to follow the A74. There is Moffat. Here is the A74. Now I love this leg because it gets into a bit of a slalom, which is just mighty fun. If you had the power lines enabled, you'd probably find that you'd need to avoid the power lines a lot because they follow on the left hand side. Here, I don't think they're replicated. It is difficult to do camera work and fly at the same time, I have to say. I love watching the traffic on the roads as you zip over. So we keep following this road and its railway until it splits off. So the A74, I think, will cruise off to the northwest and we'll head at 023 towards Edinburgh. They're almost there. You can see I've got a master caution. Click the master caution out, and I think that is the pylon tanks empty. That's cool. Not a problem. <laughs> so much fun. Okay, as it opens out, the railway will disappear off to the north. This road will disappear off to the northwest. That's the A74 heading off that way. This is the railway. You heard the term IFR, I follow roads, railways, rivers. Well, that's what we're doing. Heading 023. So I'm going to ridge roll over this uh, hill just to the left. And then we're going to pull up and fly into Edinburgh. Take a look at a couple of the sites. May get involved with a couple of bridges. And then we'll recover back to Edinburgh for a visual run in and break. If you're still here, please check in the comments what your favourite features are to fly around. Or if you don't fly sim, what are your favourite places to visit? And maybe I can have a look in the sim. There we go. Ridge roll. Let's see how low we can go. I think an operational low flying video is in order. There are three places in the UK that you can do operational low flying. And by that I mean flying down to 100 feet. Uh, Northwest Scotland is one of them, Central Wales is another, and west of Carlisle is the third place.
Okay, that's enough of that. And there is Edinburgh to the 12 o'clock. So you wouldn't do this for real, but what we're going to do is cruise in over Edinburgh. We're going to go to the castle. We'll have a look at Palace Holyrood, or Holyrood Palace, next to Arthur's Seat Visual Reporting Point. And we'll have a look at the uh, Living Globe, I think it's called, and the Parliamentary Buildings. Edinburgh Airport in the background. course you'd never do this for real well maybe you would but only once I'm hoping my system doesn't slow down something about the Edinburgh scenery and I think it might be the airport itself just makes my system turn into a little bit of a potato it shouldn't be too bad Here is the castle. And down to the right, we have the parliamentary buildings, the palace and the living globe. This is Arthur's seat visual reporting point. We're gonna head northwest over the docks and then I see a bridge in my near future. Just look at the scenery. How amazing is that? The problem with buildings in this sim is some of them don't let you fly underneath it. It kind of just puts you on the ground, puts your wheels down as if you've touched down, which is so annoying. But I know if I get it just right, this first bridge will let me do it. Here we go. Come on. Come on. Oh yes, there we go. Well, that for a view. Okay, only one thing left to do, and that is to put this thing back on the ground. So ordinarily, you do a run and break from about 1,500 feet. It'd be a 1,000 foot AGL. However, this one will be from about 20 feet. Eyeless indications are good, though. There we go. Idle. Speed break. I can just see the FPS is being eaten up. 
Okay, what are we doing? We're down at 150 knots. Speed brake can come in. Gear, first stage of flaps. Top tip for this airplane is don't turn final too soon because it's very difficult to get the speed off. About 140 knots in the final turn is ideal. Looking to roll out about 120 knots and then land about 100 and 105 knots. Slight overshoot, but nothing too bad. And slightly low, but we are aiming short of the appies. Landing from outside is always tricky. That'll do. That will do. That's about 100 knots. So now I'm going to taxi it to parking. Not going to take me very long. And then I'm going to go through some SoFly Weather Preset Pro resets just to show you what the best one looks like. Oh, he looks like he's vacating this spot for me. Uh oh. Stand off. Turn the taxi light off. Oh, really? Really? Yeah, make me do all the hard work, mate. And I'll park this way because uh, it's easy to get out the parking space then. Hey, okay, welcome to sunny Edinburgh. Here are some SoFly Weather Preset Pro presets that I particularly like. Arctic Chill. The downside of this one is a lot of the roads have snow on them, so it's difficult to navigate by. Big and bold. If you like your clouds spongy. Epic Clouds 2. Fairly epic clouds, very high contrast. I quite like this one. It's one of my favourites. Epic high level clouds. If I could see up enough. Right, let me put track IR back on. They are very tall clouds. I mean, look at that. Epic is the right word. I have epic low level clouds. And even have a sandstorm. I don't know how they get the red, but it looks pretty darn good. This is very similar to the wildfire preset they have. Although the wildfire preset has more visibility, more discernible clouds, it has the same red color. Yellow fog's quite nice. As is misty. The wet and frosty winter. and the UK Indian summer. Those are only a few of the presets available to us. Uh, there are, seems like hundreds, but uh, these kind of high 40s, 50s uh, to scroll through, lots of options, lots of easy settings, and it happens instantaneously. You don't have to mess around with settings. So that is the end of the video. If you're still with me, thank you very much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed it. I hope it was interesting and useful. If you've got any questions, please check those in the comments. If you've enjoyed it that much, certainly smudge that like button, even better than subscribe just to help support the channel. And I hope you'll join me for the next video.